The topic of this video is parenteral nutrition. At the conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the appropriate parenteral nutrition. Parenteral nutrition is a method of providing nutrition to the client through the circulatory system. When is parenteral nutrition indicated for a client? It is often indicated preoperatively if the client has poor nutritional status. Clients with gastrointestinal problems, such as short bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis may benefit from parenteral nutrition. It may be given because of the adverse effects of oncology therapy. The client may be unable to eat due to nausea, vomiting, and stomatitis. Clients with alcoholism, depression, and eating disorders may be malnourished and need nutritional support. It is also indicated for clients who have had head and neck surgery because these clients may be unable to eat. Now, once the need for parenteral nutrition has been established for a client, the type of solution that will be infused must be selected. The three most common types of solutions that may be given to the client include parenteral nutrition, which is an amino acid dextrose formula, total nutrient admixture, also known as TNA, is an amino acid dextrose lipid formula, and lipids provide fatty acids for the client. Now the type of solution selected will depend on the client's specific nutritional needs. How is parenteral nutrition administered? There are three routes for administration. The first route is peripheral. This is not the most desired route because infection risk is very high. Dextrose concentrations above 10% should not be given peripherally because they can irritate the vessels. A patient receiving parenteral nutrition through the peripheral route should only be on parenteral nutrition for less than two weeks. The central route is the preferred choice. In this method, the catheter is inserted into the subclavian vein. A PIC, percutaneous, or triple lumen catheter may be used. The third route is the atrial route. This is a possible route for parenteral nutrition, but is not commonly used. In this method, the parenteral nutrition is administered into the right atrium. Now the picture on the screen is an illustration of parenteral nutrition given through the central route into the subclavian vein. Now let's discuss the rate of infusion for parenteral nutrition. The initial rate of infusion should be 50 milliliters an hour and then gradually increase to 100 to 125 milliliters per hour as the client's fluid and electrolyte tolerance permits. It is important to always use a pump at a constant rate to prevent an abrupt change in the infusion rate. An increased rate will result in a hyperosmolar state and the client will experience headache, nausea, fever, chills, and malaise. A slower rate will drop the blood sugar and will result in rebound hypoglycemia. The client will exhibit confusion, tremors, hypotension, tachycardia, and cool, clammy skin. Additional interventions that the nurse must implement when caring for the client with parenteral nutrition include changing the IV tubing and filter every 24 hours. This will reduce the risk of infection. Keep solutions refrigerated at all times. Warm solutions to room temperature prior to administering them to the client. And if the client's parenteral nutrition is running low, and if a new solution is not readily available, use 10% dextrose and water temporarily. This is to avoid rebound hypoglycemia. The client receiving parental nutrition should be monitored closely by the nurse. It is very important to check weight, glucose, temperature, and intake and output daily. Check the BUN, calcium, and magnesium three times a week. Check the CBC, platelets, prothrombin time, 
liver function studies, AST and ALT, and serum albumin once a week. In addition to monitoring the client's lab values, it is important for the nurse to monitor the client for complications. These include hyperosmolar coma, a pneumothorax. Remember, parenteral nutrition should not be started until the chest x-ray validates placement. Sepsis may occur. Fluid volume overload is a potential complication and air embolism. Now let's do a practice question. The client with the central venous access device receives parenteral nutrition. The nurse notes that the PN is infusing at a very sluggish rate despite attempts to increase the rate, which is the best action for the nurse to take. Number one, ask the client to turn on the left side and perform Valsalva maneuver. Number two, stop the infusion and flush the intravenous catheter. Number three, remove central venous catheter and restart a new central line. Or number four, lower the head of the bed and administer oxygen via mask. Take a moment to select your answer. Number one is incorrect. The client should turn on the left side and perform the Valsalva maneuver if there are symptoms of air embolism, such as tachypnea or cyanosis. And these symptoms are not present in this question. Number two is the correct answer. The infusion should be stopped and flushed to unclog the catheter. Number three is incorrect. The nurse should not discontinue a central venous line or restart a new central line. And number four is also incorrect. We would lower the head of the bed and administer oxygen only if there was a sign of air embolism, which there is not in this question. This concludes the video on parenteral nutrition.